Question 10 then from paper 2 of the 2014 National 5. Here we go, a bearings question. Except they've not made it a bearings question because they've done most of it for you. This is the type of question where originally it wouldn't have given you this information. It wouldn't have given any of these clues about putting north lines in and so on. It would simply have said, instead of giving this, it would have said, it would have said B is 8 kilometres from A on a bearing of 060 degrees, and you'd have to know that that would mean ah, establish north from A, and then the angle clockwise until you're facing towards B will be 60 degrees. And the final part of the question, which is what the question would have been, what is the bearing of C from B? You need to think, right, the bearing of C from B, so I'm at B, so establish its north. And the bearing would be the angle I'd have to go through clockwise until I was facing the direction of C. But instead of that, it's just giving you all that to begin with. And it just says, what's that shaded angle? Instead of saying, what's the bearing and so on? Well, and it even breaks it down. How would you find that? Well, you'd complete this corner. Because after all, these parallel lines are a clue. Parallel lines transfer the same angles. Knowing there's a 60 degrees to this line here lets you find this angle in here. Which means if I want this bearing, I can get this angle from the 60, so it just leaves this unknown, but I can get that from the triangle. And that's what it says, first of all. What's the size of angle ABC? So it's actually done all the thinking for you. So how do I find this angle? Well, I don't know any angles to begin with, so it's not the sine rule. That always uses an angle with opposite pairs. Here, I've got all three sides, so it's the cosine rule in reverse. So I'll just state that. The cosine of, you could put the letters down first of all if you like, but there's no marks for that. The first mark is for substituting the values into the cosine rule. Quite often there might not be names there. If you want, you can put it down first of all. So how do you get the cosine of B? Remember it works, the cosine rule always works with a complete corner. The cosine, the two sides and the included angle. So it's going to be these two sides here, the A and the C. So you could say it's A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. Put that down if you like. There's not really any marks for that. So the cosine of B is going to be, now get the numbers in. We don't need to think of what are the names of the sides. It's the configuration, it's the positionings that matter. What includes the angles? The 8 and the 11. So it's the 8 squared and the 11 squared. And it's over the 8 and the 11. And the odd one out, the opposite one, minus the 13 squared. So that's the first mark for putting the figures into the cosine rule. Now you could get the angle straight away just by going inverse cos of that whole lot. And then that should give you the second and third marks. But if you're scared that that might be a bit too much, then just do that bit first if you like. That comes to an eleventh on these calculators now. You don't need to take it to a decimal because you're still going to do something else and you can quite easily put an eleventh into your cosine. So B is going to be inverse cos of that eleventh and you get 84.784 and so on. So angle ABC is going to be, give it one decimal place, 84.8 degrees. You might get away with 85. In fact, the marking scheme lets you do that, but you'd, never, you'd always keep one decimal place in. So for the three marks, that would have been the second mark, and then inverse cos gives you the third mark. So for part B then, what is this shaded angle, which I've not shaded? What is the bearing of C from B, which I didn't ask, I must admit, for two marks? Well, it just depends how you want to transfer that angle over here. The important things are having these north lines in. If the norths weren't there, you'd have to put them in, because these north lines let you transfer angles. If there was something to be worked out at C, put in a north line. It's just about how do you put them in. You can either put it in like this, just as far as that, and then say, well, if that's 60, that must be its supplement, which is 120. And then the three of them will make 360. So that's one way of doing it. So you could have said the angle's going to be 360 minus 120 minus 84.8, or maybe put them in a bracket with a plus, and then press the buttons, and you get 155.2 degrees. So that would be the first mark for knowing that that 60 does something up here. 
to make up a complete turn. Or another way of finding the angle would be, just depends how you put in your norths. So that was knowing that those two angles were supplementary. If you weren't sure of that, another way you can put in norths is to extend it through. And then you've got alternate angles. If that's 60, that part's 60. And then this angle and the part you want just make 180. So you'd just be subtracting the excess of the 84.8 over the 60. So your angle would be 180 minus this bit, which I suppose you could work out as 84.8 minus 60. Of course, you can just do that bit in your head, because that's just going to be 24.8. So pressing the buttons, which you don't really need to do, gives you obviously the same answer, 155.2 degrees. So that would be an alternative way using north all the way through for alternate angles, which quite often is the technique you use.